word of sermon. on this second Sunday in Advent. Uh, this is a Sunday of peace. And uh, last week we lit the candle of hope. Today we light uh, that candle as well as a second candle, which is the candle of peace. Also want to let you know, uh, you may recall that last week uh, you heard some beautiful uh, chimes from the organ uh, during some of our, uh, our hymns. That is called a Zimbelstern. Uh, this was donated by a couple from the congregation who wished to remain anonymous, but typically the Zimbelstern, these angelic chimes, are played during the Trinitarian verse, the doxology verse that so many of our, our hymns have. And so now that's another reminder that not always, but uh, typically when you hear the Zimbelstern and definitely when you see the triangle next to the verse, that's a sign to stand in honor of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Because usually it's just me standing up here doing calisthenics. Uh, but now we've got between the symbol, uh, the Zimbelstern and the symbol of the triangle, it's a good reminder that uh, those are our Trinitarian verses. In fact, uh, the Zimbelstern will be used a couple of times in our service today including on um, the final verse of On Jordan's Bank, The Baptist Cry, and of course the hymn verse that we sing, a doxology verse, 
uh, after receiving holy absolution. Uh, I want to thank those of you, the women who participated in the Advent by Candlelight uh, service last week, the service by women, for women, um, led by, uh, just, I'm not even going to mention any names because there are so many individuals involved in this, the hostesses uh, for the tables, the musicians, the soloists, the organizing committee, participants, everything was just absolutely beautiful. Um, and I think the, uh, the aromas of all the food that's been here at Bethlehem for the, for the past week, beginning with Advent by Candlelight, again today there's a cookie walk, cookie walk over in Disciples Hall, um, all kinds of cookies. If you are tired of baking yourself, or if you haven't had time to bake and want cookies, uh, you can go over to Disciples Hall following this service, uh, buy some cookies, homemade, fresh cookies, but also for a worthy cause, all of the proceeds from the sale of the cookies go to support our Concordia Seminary St. Louis Food Bank. And we know how hungry the students are at the seminary because you are one. And um, you could use a few cookies, Vicar. <laughs> um, but there are cookies over there. It goes for a worthy cause. Uh, go over and support this, uh, this minister we have to our, our seminary. Uh, Senior Shuffler's Christmas party is tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And the Angel Tree contributions. Thank you for all of you who are uh, supporting this ministry to our orphanage in Guatemala. Uh, all of the contributions, the proceeds from the Angel Tree will go to support uh, our, our orphanage. Um, but if you are going to make a contribution, uh, those contributions are due uh, this Thursday. And then finally, I just want to remind you of our midweek Advent services. Uh, our theme this year is the light of grace. These, if you're just crazy busy, if you're just caught up in the hustle and bustle and you just want to exhale for 45 minutes, these services are 45 to 50 minutes max. If you want to exhale and just let the Holy Spirit breathe new life into you, uh, come and worship at noon on Wednesdays or at 7 p.m. I promise you, you will be inspired, you will be refreshed, and you will sleep really well at night. So um, join us on our, uh, our Wednesday evening Advent services. Those are all my announcements. Do you have anything bigger? Uh, confirmation is, as usual, this week, 5.30 on Wednesday. Uh, youth group will not be on Wednesday, but will be 5.30 on Thursday because of the Advent, midweek Advent services at 7. My Bible study will be, as usual, on Thursday mornings at 9.30. And there's two events that you should be aware of uh, this weekend. The first is for young adults. We're having a white elephant uh, gift exchange Christmas party. That will be this Friday at 6 p.m. at the cottage. And there's a youth Christmas party that also will have a white elephant gift exchange, and that will be 2 p.m. on Saturday, also at the cottage. And finally, next week, Friday, is the games night for this month of December. That's the 22nd, starting at 5.30. Thank you, Vicar. Lots going on with the youth, the young adults. We really appreciate all that you're doing with them. What a wonderful ministry you have with them. Uh, Pastor Nate. Thank you. Um, yes. So at the start of last week's service, at this hour, I made a little announcement or a little speech or whatever it was, sharing with you our great appreciation and our love and thanks for you uh, from Eric and I and the kids during our time of sorrow and our time away. Uh, if you, if you didn't, weren't here or you didn't get the e-blast, those remarks are printed up and with the uh, newsletter, that's what it's called, with the newsletter in the narthex. Uh, if you'd like to take home a paper version or uh, just to do that. But uh, please do know how much we love you and appreciate you. We love you and appreciate you, Pastor Nate. We're just glad to have you back. Uh, you. Yeah. Please stand for our opening hymn on Jordan's Bank, The Baptist Cry, as we face our processional cross.
continue with the lighting of the Advent wreath, where we will light the candles of hope and peace. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We now kneel as we're able to do so for our confession. Hope in the Lord's promises of renewal by His Word and Spirit. Let us together confess our sins to Him. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my pleas for mercy. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, I would have no hope. But with you there is forgiveness. Therefore, we place our trust in you. Restore us, Lord God, and set us free from our sins. Renew us in your hope that we may wait for your salvation. Because of your steadfast love for us in Christ, redeem us from all our iniquities. As we wait for Jesus' final coming, we place our hope and our confidence in the promises of his word, and we find our home in the presence of his spirit, confessing our sins and turning away from them through lives of repentance. We are then assured again this day of the Lord's steadfast love and plentiful redemption for us. As a servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Upon hearing these words of our forgiveness, let us then stand and sing. <laughs> The grass withers, the flower fades, 
when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up on to a high mountain, O of Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arm. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 14. Here the Apostle Peter reminds us that the Lord is patient towards you. But do not overlook, overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. For the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn? But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as you're able to do so for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Saint Mark, the first chapter. beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier, mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now confess to one another and with the whole people of God the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may now be seated.
sometimes let you down. Your pastor will let you down. All deep friendships are at some point strained and put at odds. Spouses, even loving spouses, sin against each other. We all live under the depressing drip of reality number one. We too are a people who need comfort. And so, in verse 1, God calls upon whoever is listening to him to comfort, comfort his people. You'll note that the comfort from God comes via his word of command, his decree, his all-powerful declaration. That's the second. Reality number two is this. The word of our God will stand forever. Yes, the grass does wither, the flower does fade. But the word of our God does not. What he declares to be true is true forever. In the word of God, we see you have found the one thing, that one good thing, that never goes bad, that always goes right. God demands that his people be comforted using his tender word of promise, using his word that defines reality, that will stand strong. And specifically, what are those unstoppable words of promise? Verse 2. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. And here's a promise. Cry out to her that her warfare is ended. Under reality one, life is a struggle, a battle, a difficult thing. Especially as we battle our, our sinful desires and the devil, it can be tiring. But if you belong to Jesus, the one who fought in your place, you can rest easy. According to reality, too, God's forever word, the struggle is over. Not because you've made it so, or, or because it looks like it's over, or you feel like everything is just perfect. No, your struggle is ended, and you can have rest because your iniquity, the verse says, your sin is pardoned <clears throat> completely. No matter what it is, this too is because of God's Word. God's Word made flesh. At the cross, he paid for and covered every misdeed for all creation. And the result is that we, the church, well, she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. We need to hear that as a double blessing in exchange for Jesus takes your deadly sins and in exchange gives you a double portion of life. Life now and life forever. These are promised words of God. And the word of God will stand forever. In the word of God made flesh, you are spoken for. You are forgiven. And you have and will have life eternal. These are great words of comfort. But God not only speaks words of comfort, he enacts comfort. He brings it. He comes with it. This time of year we would say he advents. In verse 3, a voice cries 
In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. This isn't the way of you and a highway for you so that you can somehow get to God and grab him by the lapels and convince him to save you. This isn't the way of you. This is the way of the Lord. This is God coming on his way to get to you. He is coming in the word made flesh to bring salvation and the comfort that salvation brings. And, and whoever is listening to his voice, his messengers, they simply prepare the way. God simply uses them to help facilitate his coming, to spread the news. And God still uses messengers for that. Most famously, he did it with John the baptizer, and we hear about him and, and this prophecy of him every advent. But God still uses messengers today. His people are still called to be heralds of the good news, of what Jesus has done and is doing. That's verse 9. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, O church, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, O church, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. And what are we to say with our uplift? Say, behold your God. Behold. Behold is a word that means look it. Look. Right here, right now, look. Behold your God doesn't mean there was your God, there he went. Or, or maybe someday God will be here. Behold means, yo, check it out. Look. Look, right now, the God who forgives and rescues and gives life is here. Even while you're exiled in Babylon, even while the pain stings, while the sorrow presses, behold your God. John the Baptizer, Preachers still today, laity as well, all the church proclaims through word and deed, behold your God. That's what it's all about. Example, your baptism into Christ declares, no matter what you go through in this life or death, behold your God. personal example. I had a pastor visit me at home a few months ago for some private confession absolution. I confessed my sins. He pronounced God's forgiveness for my deepest regrets and failings. And those were reality number two words. Words that stand forever. Saying Behold your God. Your iniquity is pardoned. But that message of God coming to us, his presence right here and right now, that comes indeed too. And uh, I want today to encourage you all to keep raising your voice in word and deed. And it turns out you're pretty good at it. Because for weeks, right around dinner time, uh, my family would open the door and discover message after edible message <laughs> left on our doorstep. And they all said the same thing. Behold your God. He is with you. And the greatest example of this, of course, the greatest action of our God making his way to all of us. It's right here. Week in and week out. The church calls her members to behold her God. As he comes to her. Comforting her. Tending to her greatest needs with his own body. 
body and blood. We need that nourishing care constantly. It's not a one and, and done thing. I got comfort and I'm done. God comes to his people and he keeps coming. Verse 11 describes what our God does for us when he comes. How he cares for us. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom. This is a picture of ongoing tender care. It has to be ongoing care. It has to be a perpetual comfort. Because even though reality number two, God's word standing forever, will indeed stand forever, for right now we still live under reality number one as well. And so we all need continual nourishment and care from our shepherd who meets us right where we are. Because for, for right now, we live under both realities. Until the first reality expires, and expire it will, we wait. And while we wait, we let our God comfort us through his message. One day, of course, the wait will be over. Verse 5 gives us just a glimpse of what we have to look forward to when the word of God is the only contender left standing. When the word has finished its triumph over creation. When the grass will green unceasingly. And the flower will bloom sin and sorrow and death will all be extinguished by the brilliant glory of God. When that day comes, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. This is certain. This is a promise that stands forever because the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So, keep lifting up your voices in this wilderness, all you messengers. Your God and your comfort has come. And he's coming again. Amen. Please stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, you sent John the Baptist to herald the coming Messiah and proclaim a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. In these latter days, you send pastors to proclaim the same repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And through them lead your people to trust in your salvation. Look with kindness upon all pastors, 
that they may be diligent and faithful heralds of your beloved Son, Lord, in your mercy. God of all comfort, your word alone endures forever. The nations of the world come and go before you. Even kings and rulers are like grass before your breath. Preserve us from placing our trust in princes and mortal men. Give us rulers who will rule after your good pleasure, keeping order and protecting life, that we may live peaceably in godly quietness and honesty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, to our prayers, especially for Janet Wiegman, Erica Williams, Alan Werner, Jean Wells, Richard Jasper Richards, Ben Bryant, and Mary McGinnis. Give healing, courage, and perseverance to all who cry to you, that they may find comfort in your enduring word and the certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life with Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we know that you are not slow in keeping your promises. We thank you for your patience. Do not take your spirit from us when we stray from your commandments, but convict us of our sin and draw us back to you in repentance. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you invite us again to your table to receive the medicine of immortality in the body and blood of Christ, your Son. May we receive this sacrament rightly, that with faith strengthened and sins forgiven, our lives may be lived in holiness and godliness. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, as we in the church on earth wait for the coming of your Son, we remember all the saints who have gone before us and now rest in your presence. Keep us safe in your arms until you gather your people together in the new heavens and new earth in which righteousness dwells. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, and who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> the Lord be with you. to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Oh, oh, oh.
Jesus Christ. The same night on which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as ye drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in both body and soul, now and until life everlasting. Live in that peace and depart in that peace. Amen. Let us return thanks. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in steadfast love sent your only begotten Son into this world of sin, we thank you that for his sake you look upon us without spot or blemish and at peace. We praise you for the lasting home you give us as we trust in you. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. <laughs>